Yeah, man. The uh, the the fact that Kevin uh, he got uh, I can't believe he got stabbed and he just didn't just looked so so cool. Um, but yeah, um, Blade. Mm, what could have been? Now that is an interesting question. Shall we? Uh, shall we check it out and find out? Before the MCU, before Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, and before Brian Singer's X-Men, there was Blade, which was the first successful Marvel Blade. movie adaptation, ding, 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 critically ding, 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 and financially. Ding, 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 but if Blade ding, 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 had failed, ding. which came very close to happening, we wouldn't have had any of those aforementioned films, and certainly not the MCU as we know it today. I don't know, I think we would still have them. Vampire Hunter while they teetered on financial collapse. So let's yeah, go back and find happen. out how Blade saved Marvel and opened the door for the MCU. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is one of the greatest achievements in cinema history and the multi-billion dollar jewel in Disney's crown. Its logo alone at the start of a film or a trailer is enough to elicit cheers from an audience. That's how it strong used to be. has become. However, in the 80s and 90s, the Marvel yeah, logo and now. brand yeah. wasn't exactly synonymous with success. Before Marvel decided to take things into their own hands and self-produce their own films, starting with 2008's Iron Man, they used to license out their characters to Hollywood studios and television networks who would then adapt them however the Hulk they liked. Series into was series really good. feature films. And the results, for the most part, were... Hulk vs. Thor was the best. You can thank George yeah, Lucas Hulk and the writers of Hulk Temple vs. of Thor Doom for man. Howard the Duck, which is not only considered one of the worst films ever made, but also has the honor of being Marvel's first modern feature film. film. Although, to be fair, the film was initially envisioned as a cartoon before Lucas pushed for live action. After it bombed, Marvel's next film would be The Punisher, starring acting virtuoso Dolph Lundgren I've not seen that. Frank Castle. And we've just Although talked about The Punisher. Know it, since the director Literally the just talked about to let Lundgren wear Punisher's iconic skull shirt, feeling it would look too silly and comic yeah. booky. In the United States, the last Punisher, the, the one we talked about, that was video. way better. The low-budget Captain America would follow, but would sit on the shelf for two years before being released. It too would take several liberties with the source material. And last but not least, the Fantastic Four would be hurried into production on a shoestring budget with no intention of ever being released, so that producer Bernd Eichinger could retain his option on the property, which was set to expire. None of this seemed to matter mm. much for Marvel in the early 90s though as their comic book business was doing huge numbers thanks to a surge of speculative collectors buying up multiple editions of comics and hoarding them up in the hope that one day in the future they'll be worth a fortune as they watched as comics from the golden age were now selling for thousands to meet this demand publishers like Marvel saturated the market no, I've with never been into comics and variants resulting in a decrease in quality but nothing against them just in quantity in 1993 really Sandman them. writer Neil Gaiman gave a speech to a few thousand readers Retailers warning them that the current comic book market was a bubble that would eventually pop. Not long after, he'd be proved right. Just before this, Marvel went on a massive $700 million spending spree, acquiring trading card companies, a distribution outfit, and a significant stake in Toy Biz, a toy maker led by Avi Arad, a name familiar to most Marvel fans today for all the wrong reasons. However, this ambitious okay. move left Marvel burdened with substantial debt and minimal revenue to offset the it, ultimately leading them to file wow. for bankruptcy. With the comic book market dried up, Marvel realized that the future lay in film and proposed merging with Toy Biz to like having Marvel Chateau Studios, hoping to finally get the company's most famous characters on the big screen yeah, to the mirror man success. Uh, original with the Toby Glide, that was just As Arad epic. took control of film production, he sought to assert more control and influence until three. in the production yes, process until three. to avoid the previous disastrous attempts by Hollywood Studios to adapt Marvel properties on their own. And while it may seem obvious now, at the time, Arad would struggle to convince Hollywood executives executives of the cinematic value of Marvel characters, saying it was literally a daily fight trying to open people's eyes to what was right in front of them. Eventually, Arad would succeed in the first film Marvel Studios would package and license Blade. 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 However, the studio that licensed the Blade character New good. Line yeah. originally yeah. considered making Blade more of a spoof film and even wondered whether they could make the character white to appeal to a wider audience. Are you out of your damn mind? When writer David I love that being the film. responsible for co-writing Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, heard New Line was interested in making Blade, he went in with an idea for not one movie, but an entire trilogy, which he called the Star Wars of Black Vampire Films. I just thought Blade was the coolest character I'd ever seen, and I love the fact that he was so much darker and more brutal than Captain America. He just seemed completely different to inhabit a different kind of world. Based on his pitch, Goyer convinced the studio to go with his more grounded take on the character, while also refusing to change his skin color. As Goyer went off to write the script, yeah, you can't change his skin color. No, you're right. Character for the 90s, as the original Blade has version always of the been comics, black. rocked a bright jacket, neon glasses, and fought using wooden daggers. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you get all this... Uh, we've, we've gone recently through films where they've taken iconic characters and race-swapped them. Um, there's been a lot of people angry about that, shall we say. But like you said, you, could, you can't take Blade and make him white. First and foremost, it'll just be an insult to the character. But can you imagine the backlash of actually taking a genuine black character and then whitewashing them? Can you imagine that outrage if they did actually dare do it? Damn, I wouldn't want to be in the executive suite when that choice was made. ...from a bandolier. Goyer script drastically reworked the character, gave him a sword, and made him more of a samurai. Goyer also changed I love the Frost blade sword. from an older church deacon from the south, who in Goyer's words looked like Colonel Sanders, to someone who belonged yeah, in a Bret Ellis novel as Goyer totally reimagined the vampires. I wanted to make the vampires was it made from again, the sword? not romantic figures at all. Uh, I was much more Titanium. interested in heroin chic vampires. They're, they're not particularly attractive there's nothing particularly romantic about living forever they're, they're kind of all scumbags whistler on the other hand was created by goyer from scratch who envisioned him as an aging gunfighter who passes down his knowledge like an old john wayne type marvel liked the character so much that they used him before the film even came out in a guest appearance on spider-man resulting in a mm -hmm. legal dispute with new line who argued marvel didn't even own the character as it was a goyer creation and while typically True. deviating from the source material in movie adaptations which was cool less than yeah. stellar results, i bet he's a really good country western singer that it was for the better new line however saw Blade as a low-budget flick, but when Goyer turned in his script, the studio told him it would cost close to $50 million to produce. However, to hedge their bets, the studio told Goyer and the team that if they could get Denzel Washington to play the title character, they would make the film for $40 million. If they could get Wesley Snipes, they would make it for $35, and $20 if they could get Lawrence Fishburne. Goyer and the team wanted Snipes and approached him first, and the timing couldn't have been better, as Snipes had been trying and failing to get a Black Panther film off the ground. Didn't After know that. Snipes about Blade, he said yes on the spot. As the I always loved began, Blade's David armor. Fincher, hot off of directing I would seven, love to make that. Script and put his name forward to direct. And Fincher had laid out 40, 50 books of photography and art. And he just said, this is the movie. There's no question that, that a lot of that thinking, because I'd never really seen something like that before, that a lot of that thinking then infused my further revisions and inform my further revisions. Goyer, even though he was a fan and friend of Fincher's, knew Fincher would likely eventually drop out and just end up wasting everyone's time, which is exactly what happened when Fincher opted to direct the game instead, leaving Blade without a director. And with nobody else in Hollywood interested in stepping in, Goyer remembered a low-budget sci-fi horror movie he'd seen called Death Machine that Brit Stephen Norrington had directed. In Goyer's words, Death Machine might have been a little incoherent, but it was just non-stop balls to the wall. The never heard of it. No, I've never heard of it. it for nothing too. After Goyer reached out to him, he learned Norrington loved comic books as well. And after he met with Snipes, the two had instant chemistry. And besides Goyer's solid script, Norrington's gritty direction also deserves heaps of credit. The yeah, film has there's a so many good energy, bits in Blade which at War. times mirrors the euphoria vampires experience after they drink blood. It treats Blade himself with substantial gravitas, enabling us to see him how the vampires see him. And there he was. Cool. Very nice. The film's cool blue nocturnal oh, color palette cool cultivates a chilling and unsettling ambience juxtaposed against the daytime's warmth. Plus, it had wire foo before the Matrix, showcasing mind-boggling fight choreography and a plethora of physical stunts while being unabashedly violent and gory. In other words, you could feel the director and his horror aesthetics behind the camera. Yeah. And unlike most Marvel brilliant. films today, this it's one didn't feel bland film. and vanilla like it was made from an assembly line. However, when the film was test screened for audiences, it was a disaster. It was criticized for being too long and the climax too stupid, as it originally featured Frost, played brilliantly by Stephen Dorff, morphing into La Magra, a giant swirling mass of blood, courtesy of poor late 90s visual effects. It just looked like this big jello thing. They just really were into Dorff as a villain, and the minute he 
was off screen and became this thing they couldn't relate to. It got really silly. The audience, however, was really enthusiastic about the rest of the film, so the producers, still believing in it, ordered reshoots to change the ending to a sort of... Oh, light yeah, the... Uh, uh, in addition to keeper. this, the runtime for the rest of the film was also cut down. Cool. And one of those casualties was Stan Lee's cameo as a cop discovering Quinn's body on fire at the blood club, while another was a somewhat goofy cameo at the end of the film that saw Morbius show up to set up a sequel. Did he? What? Wow. It's important to put Blade's release in historical context. The cheesy Steel, starring Shaquille O'Neal, had come out a year before and bombed, followed by the incredibly campy Batman and Robin, which almost killed off the comic book genre completely. Not to mention the string of awful Marvel films that were still fresh in our collective memory. So before Blade came out... Yeah, the, the Batman films, they start, <clears throat> they started off really good, and then they got dramatically cheesy as they got on. But they were shot to be in the style of a comic book on film. Um, and I think that's why they were so epically cheesy. They're really bad. Yeah. They, yeah, we can look back at them now. I mean, I remember seeing them when they came out, thinking they were great. And, you know, I'm not requesting it, but it's just one of those things you know um they had a specific a, a vision that they wanted to make the, the film as close to what was in the comics that's what they went for uh and then we had the christian bale one which was just epic uh, and that was uh, done to be as a like a, if it was a real life situation how would it be and filmed it you know so very different takes out, many thought it would bomb. Fortunately, those worries were unfounded. Not only did it soar in commercial success, but it also received critical acclaim, demonstrating a continued hunger for comic book films. It's a good looking picture, it has high energy, and the vampire stuff adds just enough detail to give the movie Who's texture. That old guy? I liked it. I did too. High energy might be an understatement. <laughs> Additionally, Blade proved that you could make a successful film from a lesser known comic book character, which would eventually pave the way for the likes of yeah. Iron Man and Thor. Its grounded take on the character would also influence the tone of both X-Men and Spider-Man, which would be Marvel's next films that they would license out to Fox and Sony respectively, with each studio eager to so make the right so, yeah, so so Even so though all three of these films were hits, the profits Marvel saw by licensing them to studios to produce were minimal. Yeah, the with the Spider Man uh, and the fact that he's been in the Marvel Universe, basically Sony rented the rights to him so that uh, Marvel could use him, but so he still got like a share of the profits. But basically, the underlying reason was Sony's tried with Spider Man again and failed with the Amazing Spider Man, and they keep failing. So they knew they knew if they gave it to Marvel, Marvel just absolutely knock out the ballpark. So they did, and then just took a cut of the money. Smart, really. Yorod lamented that they were giving away the best part of their business as they sat on a gold mine but struggled to reap the rewards. That's when entertainment executive David mm -hmm. Maisel sat down with Marvel and intervened, suggesting they should produce their films themselves, retain 100% of the profits, and mirror the interconnected nature of the comics, allowing for crossovers and team-ups. It was an idea that could, in theory, be worth millions. And while Maisel was immediately yeah, made Marvel was I don't think was to execute his vision, he was wrong about one thing. His idea wasn't worth millions, but rather billions and none of it would have happened without the success of blade thanks for watching everybody yeah i mean wesley snipers blade number one was absolutely epic i mean it's such a good i remember coming out of the film with my mate going, and just going that was so good um the second one was really really good as well um and i like the third one uh, maybe not as much as one and two, but I like the third one uh, for what it was because uh, I enjoyed it to be honest. So I'm not going to make any uh, any qualms about that. You thought it was okay, yeah, absolutely. No one else could be Blade. Well, they're trying to redo Blade. They're trying to reshoot it, but it's had like no end of problems for like the last few years with the main actor, the script, the actor going on with the director, not just this whole host and string of things that's been going on. Uh, so I don't know if that will ever come out, um, but yeah, uh, agreed. Um, I think uh, I think the person that should be Blade is Wesley Snipes, and maybe they should do another Blade with Wesley Snipes. Who knows? If they did, you'd watch it. Yeah, I would.